Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here, and we're glad you joined us. We're going to have a great show. We're going to talk about lameness in cattle, and we're going to talk about a new locomotion scoring system with Dr. Shane Terrell. Dr. Terrell's a veterinarian from Nebraska. It's bound to be a great show, and we're really glad that you joined us. We're cow-calf producers from Northeast Colorado. We run about 300 commercial cows and calves and uh, sell them at the sale barn in October. Since we've been given multi-min, our reproduction rate is about 95%, which is pretty good for grassland, and we run bulls, and we do not AI. That means an extra 15 calves at sale time. We've been using the multi-min product for three years. We are really happy with it and recommend it to anybody in this business. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Welcome to the show. I appreciate it. I appreciate you asking. I'm, pretty, I'm glad to be here. Well, this is, folks, this is Dr. Shane Terrell, and he's a veterinarian, uh, lives in Gothenburg, Nebraska. Yes, sir. And uh, Shane, you know, your background started out in western Nebraska. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I, uh, I guess I came originally from western Nebraska, um, grew up on a cow-calf feedlot uh, farming operation, came to Kansas State University through, for vet school, um, and started in Kansas in practice, I have moved to Nebraska, uh, currently spending some time consulting feed yards and also working on a PhD uh, through Kansas State University. Well, we're tickled to death to have you here on the show. and. And we're going to talk about uh, some of the research that you've been doing. We'll talk about some of the things that you've uh, developed in, in combination with not only the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State and with PAC, the, uh, the, the veterinary group that you, you are a member of, but also uh, with Zimpro Corporation. And, and uh, it's exciting, you know, to, to think about because, you know, we focus so much on, on BRD and we focus so much on acidosis and, and that. And, and, Lameness is one of those things that's kind of slid under the radar. Absolutely, over you know over the year and, and historically in, in the feedlot industry, uh, it's very easy to put our emphasis in, in respiratory disease. It's a it's an obvious economic issue. It's an obvious health issue. Um, lameness isn't always easy to deal with, uh, so it's often overlooked. Uh, and it's also it's not as as a big of uh, economic problem as as respiratory disease, but. As we've approached it and as we started looking at it, we realized that it's a, there's a huge opportunity there, a huge opportunity preventing death loss, railer salvage animal or salvage slaughter animals, and, and we really, uh, putting a little bit of emphasis on, emphasis on it, we really uh, can target and make, uh, make large steps in, in improving those situations. Yeah, and, and, I, and I remember, you know, in my time as a veterinarian, and it was one of those things that we knew we needed to do more about it. We didn't know exactly how big of an impact it was making on our operation or, or when to, to intervene on those cattle. Some of them seemed to get better, some of them didn't. And, and what are some of those things that you're seeing? So uh, that's absolutely right. We, as, we, uh, as we look at lameness in the feedlot, you know, there's several different categories and, and several, several different causes uh, of those lamenesses. But as we go through, uh, because there's different causes, we have to focus on different points in, uh, in intervening and preventing those. Uh, we have, over the years, uh, looked at preventing and, and tried to do some things to prevent uh, prevent those lamenesses, uh, those processing type injuries, uh, animal handling uh, has been a, is a big part, and, and just uh, processing facilities, maintenance, and those kind of things are, are simple things that we've, we've looked at, but as we move along, you know, intervention and, and timely intervention is a, a big part of it. I have no doubt that it is. Folks, when we come back from the break, we're going to continue our discussion with Dr. Shane Terrell, and we're going to talk about lameness, and we're going to talk about locomotion scoring and how to kind of grade those cattle. You're watching Doc Talk. We're glad, we're glad that you joined us. We'll see you here in a minute. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. 
and by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. This tip brought to you by Batrol 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved for use in controlling BRD in high-risk cattle. Batrol 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Hi there, it's Dr. Dan with an on-the-farm tip. Today we're going to talk about receiving pen management for those high-risk calves. Nothing aggravates me more than to have a load of calves come into a feeding facility and our receiving pen is not prepared. What I'm talking about with preparation of that pen, first of all, is cattle comfort and a place to lay down. If there's mud in the pen, we want to make sure we the box blade one lap, give those cattle a place to lay down, or supply bedding. Another thing, a tip that we need to make sure we provide ample water supply and make sure that we have good long stem hay in the bunk for those calves. That's your On the Farm tip. I'm Dr. Dan and thanks for joining us. With BRD, every second counts. And when you get new high-risk cattle, you've got a choice to make. You can either take your chances and wait and see what happens, or you can take charge of BRD. Right from the start, treat bacteria up front with Batro 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved by the FDA for BRD metaphylaxis and high-risk cattle. Ask your veterinarian about Batro 100 and make it your go-to drug to control BRD and high-risk cattle or for treatment of BRD. Batro 100, right the first time. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a power stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. Getting ready to work cattle for pre-breeding and calf vaccinations? There's no better time to use a safe, modified live virus vaccine to prevent BRD. Titanium provides the correct equation for BRD with its excellent safety profile and a strong response and long duration of immunity. Ask your veterinarian about modified live virus vaccines and the eight convenient combinations of titanium for the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normos in LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Hi there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Shane Terrell and we're at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and Dr. Terrell is a veterinarian, a feedlot veterinary consultant, uh, soon to be a veterinarian and PhD and, and does a lot of time and research in, in lameness issues and different issues within the cattle feeding facilities. Uh, Shane, when, when you started out and we started out looking at this locomotion scoring system, you know, the first question is, is why, why do we need something like this? Well, you know, as we've gone through and, and we look at the dairy industry as an example, they've utilized locomotion scoring in the last uh, 10 to 15 years to get an idea of what the true prevalence uh, of lameness is uh, in their uh, I guess in their facilities, uh, again, we kind of underestimate the, the impact of lameness within ours. And, and so as we, we developed this uh, to try and learn true incidents in some of our lame, or our research that we're working with for, for the PhD. And so as we uh, went through that, we developed the locomotion scoring to, to rate the severity as we get these, these lameness prevalence uh, data collected. Uh, but what we, what we found is utilizing the locomotion scoring we can use that to identify animals earlier, uh, which is probably the biggest imp or difference we can make. A lot of these diseases are highly treatable if we intervene at the right time. And so by utilizing this locomotion scoring system, we've been able to intervene uh, in a more appropriate timing. We, don't, we aren't allowing those animals to fall behind the pen. Uh, we don't have to necessarily see swelling. If they exhibit uh, discomfort to a degree uh, to show us these locomotion scores, 
then we we know that we can go ahead and intervene at that time and we don't need to to to, to wait and, and see if they re resolve so it kind of standardizes and and gives us a, a similar talking points if somebody's saying Absolutely. I'm seeing a one or a two or I'm seeing a lot of severe lamenesses it gives the, you the kind of the lingo now that everybody can knows what you're seeing absolutely and then you know as you talk with uh, you know with feed yard managers or, or the cattle health per personnel uh, your eyes can't always be there but so if, if you use a standardized standardized system we can uh, we can, can communicate without they can be the eyes yeah we don't, we don't have to be there to, to necessarily see uh, and it, it helps communication of the problem within within these cattle or cattle organizations or feedlots. Yeah, well, and then, you know, we're seeing issues with different lamenesses at packers and Absolutely. at feedlots and, and at cow-calf operations. And it, I think it's also going to allow people from different segments to have a similar language. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, whether you're seeing lameness at, at Larridge at the packing plant or if you're seeing it at, at loadout on the feedlot. And, you know, even as we pull back into the cow-calf uh, segment of it, but, you know, just if we look, look at the feeding segment, you know, we have sale barns that lameness is a concern coming out of the sale barns. We have our, you know, at the feedlot and, and they, just like I said, at the packer. And so, so we can kind of bridge that gap and, and uh, hopefully uh, communicate some of these problems uh, between different sector, sectors of the industry. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, let's jump right into some of that locomotion, see some of those videos that you have, and, and share it with the people out there watching. Absolutely. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We're going to take a break, and we'll see you after a bit. I've always had an interest in care for the animals and their well being. Really what we want to do is work hard to eliminate as much feedlot lameness or beef cattle lameness as possible. How we feed a cow on a daily basis can not only have daily effects, but they can also have long-term effects on claw health, uh, reproductive performance, uh, mammary health, all of those factors as we look at, at the inputs and the response that the animal has to what we feed them. When animals have adequate intake of effective nutrients, we take care of the immune system and performance follows. It's important that the consumers understand our dedication to the well-being of these animals. Hi, I'm Kevin Auctioner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook. Specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle, Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. We were having uh, some conception problems with the cattle so our local vet came and uh, we took some blood samples and found that some of the donor and recipient females were significantly low in terms of uh, selenium and copper. With the use of multi-men we were able to increase those levels back to a normal level. We've seen a significant increase in our pregnancy rates on our recipient cattle. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Shane Terrell, and we're talking about the locomotion scoring system that Dr. Terrell has developed here at Kansas State University. And uh, Shane, uh, you've got your computer up here. Oh, well, so you want to look at some videos? Absolutely. Right. So let's take a look at some of the video here. 
and take a look at what some of the different uh, scoring systems are uh, with the cattle. All right, Shane, well, let's uh, get started here. What are we looking at here first? So when we take a look, we're going to look at a zero. So this is a normal animal. Most of us intuitively know what a, a normal animal walks like. But as we, uh, as we look at this video, these animals, uh, the things we're going to focus on is stride length, uh, the movement of the head, and, and, and the back. So as we watch this Charlet calf come across the screen, uh, the head, there's going to be some slight side-to-side -side movement of the head, but we don't see a significant head bob. There, that, that head isn't going to drop out or, or come up 6 to 12 inches. If we look at stride length, we're going to look for first the stride length and then the symmetry of stride length. Uh, so the hind foot nearly replaces the front foot track in a normal animal. Uh, once they become lame, we'll see a shortening of stride, so that, that hind foot will fall uh, further behind you know, in 8 to 12 to, to even further behind that front foot track. Uh, and then uh, the last thing is we're going to look at the symmetry of stride length. So uh, the difference between the, the left side versus the right side uh, as we look at that. Cool. So head bob, stride uh, length, and then stride symmetry. Exactly. All right. Well, let's take a look at one that would be uh, somewhat lame here, a one would be your next score right after a zero. Shane, go ahead and set this up. What are we going to be looking at for a locomotion scoring one? So again, uh, for locomotion scoring one, uh, the threshold to become a one is a, is a shortened stride length or asymmetry, asymmetry to that stride. Uh, we will not see a head bob yet, and we, we will not be able to identify a, a, a specific limb affected. So intuitively, we're going to see a, a change in gait, a change in movement. But if we break it down, we'll see a, a shortened stride length. And again, uh, we may see this some side-to-side -side head, head movement, but we aren't going to see that head All right. Bob. Well, let's see this calf. So as this calf walks, we can, uh, again, oh, we, yeah. we can kind of identify a, a slight change in gait. Um, if we watch the calf, uh, we, can, uh, we can't necessarily identify what limb's affected. Uh, I guess if we look at it quickly... And uh, the, if you look, the symmetry of stride length, that left side stride is a little bit shortened compared to the right side uh, stride length. Very cool. So, Shane, what's going to be the difference between a locomotion 2 and a 1? So the, the breaking point to, for it to become a 2, uh, we will see a head, either a head bob or obviously obvious limb that's affected, or obvious limp in one limb. So uh, if we look at, look at this calf, here as it comes across the screen, the screen oh, yeah. we see a, a significant head bob that head falls out 6 to 12 inches and it can also come up depending on the location of the lameness um, and again we're going to identify what limbs affected uh, it's shifting its weight enough uh, enough so for us to identify affected limb and really getting from those ones to those twos is something that we're probably needing to work on. Exactly. But, all right. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back from the break, we're going to wrap up with a locomotion scoring three and more with Dr. Terrell. This segment is brought to you by Purple Wave Auction, the easiest, most straightforward way to sell used equipment. Purple Wave. Straight. Simple. Sold. From Kansas State University, this is Agriculture Today. K-State has long been a world leader in wheat genetics research, and that was amped up even more recently as the National Science Foundation named K-State as the lead institution for the world's first industry university cooperative research center on wheat. K-State wheat geneticist Bikram Gill will direct the center. I think this is the uh, first time that uh, National Science Foundation has established a center of this type in crop plants, and the first one in wheat, uh, so we're very excited. Aim of the center is to tackle some of the constraints to wheat production related to heat uh, and drought in relation to climate change. This is K-State Research and Extension. It takes vision, dedication, hard work. It takes knowing who you can trust. At Zinpro Corporation, we have more industry-endorsed research behind our trace minerals than any other company. Proof that our patented performance minerals help improve overall animal health and performance. Lots of companies make claims. At Zinpro, 
we generate results. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Hi there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Shane Terrell. Dr. Terrell is a veterinarian uh, and feedlot consultant working on a PhD here at Kansas State University and has developed a locomotion scoring system between the Beef Cattle Institute and Zenpro Corporation, and really a timely discussion with the things that we have going on with lameness within the beef cattle industry uh, and the interest of scoring. I think it's really important that we all get on the same page, use the same language, and, and we've gone through a normal, the one and the two, and as Dr. Terrell explained, the things that we're looking for, head bob, stride length, and symmetry of that stride, left and right side, so now we're going to show, we've gone through a 0, 1, and 2, and, and now uh, kind of set up and tell me what a locomotion 3 is. So score. Our, this is the most severe, right? Exactly, our most severe score. And, and these are animals, they're, they're going to exhibit those, those same benchmarks as the two. Uh, there's going to be a head bob. Uh, they're going to, there's going to be an obviously affected limb. These animals are going to be reluctant to move, uh, is, is how they kind of become in, to fall into 3. Um, if we don't put pre or we don't pressure those animals to move, they're not very willing to move on their own. Uh, they're uh, when they're standing, they'll they'll take some weight off that limb uh, uh, and protect that limb uh, when they aren't moving. But again, they're going to be fairly reluctant to move and, and and more severe. All right, well let's take a look at this calf. So oh, again, wow. uh, on this video, you can see we're we're going to ha we're having to continually put pressure on it to to get this animal to move. We can identify the lameness. Uh, uh, it's got a pretty significant front limb lameness. Uh, that head's coming up again. That's why we call it a bob, and on not necessarily just a head drop, depending on where that lameness is. But there's significant head movement. Um, it's not where we're exceedingly willing to move, and these are the animals that we're hoping uh, to prevent uh, to fall into this category. So when we're when we're talking about this, first of all, great videos. Uh, Kind of walk me through, again, the differences between a 0, 1, 2, and 3 on the locomotion scoring system. So when you look at a 0, they're going to be freely moving. Uh, we're going to have a symmetric stride length. We're going to have a full stride length, uh, no head movement. As we move into those category 1s, they're going to have an asymmetry of stride, uh, stride length. Uh, there's going to be a shortened stride length. They won't have the head bob present, and we can't identify what limb's affected. Again, that's what, how we identify those 2s. They have an a, a either or a head bob present or a, or an obvious limb affected, um, and those locomotion score threes are the animals that uh, are reluctant to move. They'll also have the head bob present, also have uh, uh, have that shortened stride length. So normal, shortened stride will take us to the one. Yep. The head bob takes us to the two, and then obvious which limb it is it takes us to the three. 
Thanks for watching today. Folks, if you want to know more about what we do at the veterinary school, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember to always work with the local veterinarian. We appreciate you watching the show today. You've been watching Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Doc Talk, produced in cooperation with Drovers Cattle Network and Bovine Veterinarian. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection, 